There we go, everyone. So Anthea is now on play. And Anthea and I are going to, um, we're going to play our a basic system that most of the things include what we've covered so far in the lessons. Uh, we're going to be playing Bergen Raises. And uh, we're also going to be playing Transfers, etc. And Week 2 bids. So everyone, I really would love you to get um, involved in uh, the, the process as we go along. Anthea, Anthea is playing simply on BBO. So Anthea can't see the Zoom. She can't see my hand. She can only see her hand and me vice versa. But um, I will commentate as we go along. Well, this is an interesting hand. Everyone, what do you think? Partners, you know, I've got how many in high cards? 16 high card points. Well, let's take our time on this hand, everyone. And please, I'd love to hear people's uh, suggestions as to which way to go. Should we run a risk and overcall 3 no trump? But in order to do that, I think we've got to rely on partner to have close to a maximum hand. Is no trump an option? Yes, it is. Three no trump's an option. And that's the option that I would choose if partner wasn't a past hand. See, so partner's limited to 10 or 11 points here. Double, yeah, double scares me, Harleen. Um, it scares me past <laughs> I'm, I'm leaning towards pass. And because I've got an easy opening lead, and I reckon there's every chance that we can um, take the opponents down in this part score, I can see probably four tricks in my hand, and that would leave one trick from partner. But the problem that I have is, if I bid three no trump, I can't see enough tricks. Sue's actually, I like your comment, Sue. It's a good defensive hand, which is really important. That's a really great comment. This is a good hand for defense rather than offense. So the problem about double is it's a takeout double. And if we make a takeout double on this hand, then our partner's going to bid and we don't know whether they've got a good hand or not for their, um, for their bid. So I think I'm all things considered with partner being a past hand, I think we'll pass. Okay, so we've landed in three clubs. Okay, let's lead the ace of hearts. Now, partner's playing low in courage with me, which is nice to know. So partner's played the seven. Let's look at the spots around the table and try and work out if that seven is from two cards or three cards. Uh, the low spots out there are still the four. So the four is missing. Will partner's seven be consistent with uh, maybe three cards? It probably won't be consistent with four, but I think I'm definitely going to play another top, top uh, heart here. Okay, so partner discouraged because um, she didn't want me to continue the suit. Interesting that they've played a diamond here because they probably want to go over to dummy. Partner plays the eight. And they've now finessed. Okay, everyone. Now we've got one heart trick. We've got, what have we got here? We've got Should we switch to a spade now? The Clara has got seven clubs, one heart, and therefore five cards in the other two suits, which means that they will, um, if they've got the king of spades, then uh, they've definitely got uh, all of the outside tricks. And if they don't, then I think that we will um, subsequently get a spade trick in the wash or partner's king will end up scoring. So. Let's keep playing um, uh, high hearts and make declare a trump in here. Good oh. So far, so good. They did finesse. It's a partner's king.
Okay, so things are looking pretty grim here, I think, at this point in time. So let's play a spade. And then declare I should have an extra trump. So one ten to east west. I think partner and I did about as well as we uh, expected to do on that hand. Let's have a look at the scores at the, at the uh, our history and our scores. And well, okay, so that's interesting. I've uh, when we play this, we're playing imps scoring. So. I should have mentioned that to my partner before we started playing because that means that over tricks aren't the vital aspect here. It's all about uh, imps as in international uh, match points, which means essentially similar to playing teams so that uh, plus scores are good scores, striving to bid game is a good thing, but over tricks are less important, everyone, less important. So what did they do at the other tables? Have a quick look. Well, there you go. A lot of people decided to bid on our cards and they were luckily enough, a lot of them weren't doubled, some were. So it was a good decision not to bid in the end. And that was tempered by the fact that my partner clearly had passed as dealer, which meant that their chances of having values for game were not strong. And as Sue rightly pointed out, which I really like, was my hand was very much a defensive hand rather than an offensive. So it was a hand that I'd rather defend rather than declare. The only option was three no trump and um, that, as I said, was not such a great idea opposite a passed hand. Okay, so our right hand opponents passed and so will we. Okay, partner's in the hot seat now. So partner's showing extra values here. She didn't rebid two diamonds. It looks like there's a big chance she'll have a single suitor because with a two suitor, she may have bid the second suit, especially if it was spades. So we're playing partner for around about 16 points here and um, a six card diamond suit. Any thoughts? I think these decisions in real time are really interesting. Pass, yep, that's, that's in the forefront of my mind is to pass. Yep, pass. Well, this is peer group pressure now because I've just had uh, have, uh, six people tell me to pass. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do and we'll let Anthea play this in three diamonds. There we go. Let's have a look at Anthea's hand. Yeah, I think I, I, I agree with Anthea's bid. I think that's the right call. And I think she's probably in the right contract. The seventh diamond may have given a little bit more playing strength, but where is she to go on this hand? Very difficult. Ducking was a good play. Well done, partner. Because she played the queen to be offside from an inter uh, internal sequence. Tough decision. Good. Yep, I agree with the finesse. I think that's quite reasonable. Queen of spades. King. She'll ditch her heart on that. My partner's a pro. <laughs> she not only plays well, she plays quickly as well, which is great. And she's weighing up her options in trumps. Yep, ace king looks right. Rather than take the finesse, eight ever, nine never, she doesn't have any, any indication uh, to the contrary that she should be well done. See, this is good stuff. I wonder if she's going to try and sneak a heart through to the king. Mm. 
Yeah, she tried it. Good effort. And now she's got trumps left, so she can claim. What a good decision. Now, a small issue on this hand is would three no trump have been possible on the actual cards? Um, and in this instance, um, perhaps uh, Anthea doesn't know, but um, you can um, uh, claim, there's a little claim button there when you're the declarer on the side. So, and this is something good for you all to know. Well done, partner. 10 tricks, good effort. And that's basically a flat board. It says 0 0.5 for the opponents. Let's look at what they did at the other tables. All the tables here on that board. They seem to be popping up. Okay, no, oh, here we are. So some people made game. It seems pretty ridiculous to me when, I'll pro or maybe what they did was they were given a trick on the opening lead. But I think my partner's done very well. I'd be very proud of that result. Okay, let's keep going. So far, so good. Do I open this hand or not, everyone? Please give me your thoughts. A wise friend used to tell me, always open ace, king, ace. Now, I'm not completely convinced of that. But I think that this is a hand, how many losers do I have? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hands with 11 points. If you've, if you've done that uh, lesson with me. Everyone, do you think that's a lesson that you'd like to go over again? Because I actually think I gave the upgrading and downgrading lesson prior to the April webinars. And I think it's a great, it's a great lesson to look at. The theories about whether your hand is good enough or not to open the bidding at the one level. I'm not the biggest believer in the rule of, um, of 20. Yep, I'm, not, I'm not a great fan. I think it needs to be tempered by losers. So in this instance, yep, yep, I've got a lot of people for one heart. So I'm in agreement with you all, one heart. Yeah, Neil's asked a good question here about length values. I will give this lesson um, about upgrading and downgrading hands or um, evaluating your cards as the dealer. And I don't actually chat about, or Kathy, sorry. Um, uh, I don't actually uh, chat about um, length points because length points to me, I don't think is necessarily a universal way of looking at hands. I think a much better way to approach hands is um, I'm going to bid my second suit here, everyone. I'm not going to bid one no trump. Bid two clubs. Give Anthony a two trick, two suits to look at. The opponents have stopped, decided to, for some reason, to stick their neck out with two diamonds here. That seems pretty weird to me. They're vulnerable. Why didn't they bid two diamonds the first time? Seems odd. So, Kathy, to answer your question, as we're um, lead, but lead directing, you know, lead directing is at the one level, not at the two level. Most definitely not at the two level. Pass, pass from partner. Well, do I double here for takeout? I'm not so sure about that. If I double here and my partner bids two spades, would I be happy? Well, my partner could have freely bid two spades. I reckon my partner's probably happy to defend two diamonds, and I've got a minimum. And they're vulnerable, so let's let's go there. Let's play this hand in two diamonds. So, Kathy, back to your question about length points. Or length, uh, I'm not. I don't believe in length values per se. Um, okay. Well, this is interesting. My partner didn't raise hearts, and she didn't lead a heart. So. I reckon my partner at this point in time looks like they've probably got a mirror hand of mine. They've probably got uh, two clubs, two hearts, five spades and four diamonds or yeah, that looks like, oh no, she can't have four diamonds because dummy's got three. So my partner's nine of clubs might be from three, three to the, um, 
King Jack, no, it can't be that. Let's think about what's happening here. I, I'm, I feel confident that I should be playing um, the ace here and then switching to the ace king of hearts to give partner a rough. What do you think? Low to encourage, which is good. Mm. Yeah, maybe partner might have led the queen of hearts to my first suit there. But I'm actually going to play back the eight of hearts because I'd rather a spade return. I might just be able to get another rough wood, encourage that continuation. That's good. Maybe partner will get in now. Hmm, no. Yeah, didn't work out well our defense. Uh, the Queen of Hearts would have been a better lead because we would have been able to take our heart tricks separately and then partner um, would have been able to get her trump naturally. <coughs> oh, partner had a singleton club. I totally misread that. And now I know why my partner did what she did. That was my poor defense there, everyone. My partner did very well, actually, on, in retrospect. Mm. So instead of berating partner, I really should be apologizing because my partner's bid was, was, my partner's lead was probably, oh, hang on, no, partner had a doubleton club. Let me have a quick look at that. Yeah, partner did have a doubleton club. So the doubleton heart lead would have worked better. And Anthony's got a very interesting hand as to whether she should um, uh, bid two spades over two diamonds. I think with six of them not vulnerable, it's probably, probably worth it on that hand. We can see what they did at the other tables though. At the other tables, yeah, a number of them did play two spades on our cards and some went down in two spades. Yeah, we can hold that previous hand. Let's have a quick look at it here. Everyone, you can see that in the corner of your screen, I hope, the um, previous hand. It is quite small. So if partner, I would have been tempted um, with the six card spade suit, not vulnerable to rebid that spade suit. That wouldn't have shown a lot of extra values. Um, uh, it would have shown the minimum hand six to nine, the six card suit. I suspect Anthea was worried because the spades were not that good. She had ace followed by the nine. But six card suits, um, especially not vulnerable, should be bid uh, either opened with a week two if you have that opportunity or rebid um, uh, if you are not vulnerable and your first bid only showed four. So two spades probably would have been uh, a good option. Okay, let's move on with the next hand. One spade, double from partner, pass. Well, this to me is a standout one no trump response. Now, one no trump response, even after the responder here is passed, shows some values. Can you please explain the scores in the we, they column? Yes, so that's what we call IMPs, Avril. IMPs um, are essential. You, know, you see this 1.3. What that means is it means that um, it's the equivalent of making an over trick. So at this point in time where plus 0 0.6, which is less than an over trick's uh, worth. Okay, partner's bid to no trump. So she's asking me, am I minimum or maximum for my call? What do you think everyone? Am I minimum or maximum for my one no trump bid? And ho I'm hoping that the two no trump bid is just simply inviting to gain, not, not a competitive action from my partner. Partner's probably got some off shape 
Yep, I, I'm with you, Anne Stewart. I think that the King of Diamonds is under the diamond bid, yes. But how often do you think, Jane, that East is going to get on play to play through the diamonds? I don't think they're going to get on play very often at all. Um, any thoughts? Any, anyone passer? Who's a passer? Who's a three-no trumpeter? And remember, everyone, we're vulnerable and it's teams. What does that mean? If we're vulnerable and, it, and it's teams, it means that we have more to gain by bidding game because if we, if we bid game and make it, then we get plus 600. So if we bid game and go down, we will lose six imps. But if we bid game and make it when we're vulnerable, we will gain 10 imps. And the contrary position is, if you're not vulnerable, and you, if you bid game and make it, it's plus six imps. If you bid game and go down, it's minus five imps. So you can see if you're not vulnerable, yep, the, the decision's 50-50. But if you're vulnerable, the decision is far more in favor of bidding game than not bidding game. They say the statistics are if you think you can make game 37% of the time, you should bid it. Now, I don't know anyone who works out that they're going to make the game 37% of the time at the table, but this is one of those times where I feel 37% um, confident. So that's what I'm going to do. Bid game. I hope Anthony doesn't think that I'm thinking, there, yeah, good bid, Anthony. Yeah, well done. I think she did very well here. Very well. So, should we take a finesse on this hand? Well, um, I don't think West has the Queen of Clubs, do you? They've got five spades and four diamonds. Where's the King of Hearts? That's the big question on this hand. Where is the King of Hearts? It's odds on that West has Queen Jack of Diamonds and Ace King Jack of Spades. So that gives them 11 points. If they've got the King of Hearts, that's 14. I think it can't hurt us here to... Well, see, if they win and switch to a diamond, clubs could be short in the West Hand. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I think clubs could certainly be short in the West Hand. So probably the best thing to do here is unblock, gain our three club tricks. That means we'll have three club tricks, two diamond tricks, and that's five. And then it depends how many hearts West has. Does West have a doubleton king? Do they have a singleton king? Singleton king would be very interesting. If they've got singleton king, I would need to play a low heart at trick two. So let's start counting the cards here. The six doesn't look like it's from an honor, does it? Probably from six, two, six, four, two, something like that. So let's pop up with the ace to start with. Hmm. The eight. Should we clear diamonds? A clubs, pardon me? I think that's what we'll do. We'll clear clubs. Yep, so there was a singleton club in the West Hand, which uh, increases the chance that West has three cards in hearts. I think West is gonna come under a lot of pressure uh, when I play this next club, because they have to start making discards. Well, they play a diamond now, that's interesting. So if they play a diamond, I can afford to win with the king in my hand and then play the queen of hearts. Why would West lead? Well, good question, Zan. West, um, I found that these robots often lead singletons against no trumps. Does anyone remember the other day when I was completely fooled by West's singleton lead and didn't finesse twice in a particular suit? Well, they did it again. So the six of diamonds here, that's consistent with how many? Well, we're missing the three, the four and the two. So that six could be from a doubleton. It might be a muddy card. I think at this point we win the king of diamonds. Uh, 
And then, do we play our winning 10 of clubs now? Or do we play, I think that's what we might do, because I reckon we can end play West to give me the Queen of Spades as my ninth trick. So that's going to be our plan here, everyone. I'm going to play the Queen of Hearts. West covers, expected. Now I play a heart back to my Jack. Now I play my winning 10 of clubs. West has discarded a spade. Interesting. I think I'll also discard a spade. Hmm. Because West is keeping their ace king of spades, they're going to keep getting out with diamonds here. Um, I'm probably not going to get a chance to end play West. I think I'm going to fall short on this hand. Now I play my last heart. If they're 3-3, three, three, no, they're not. West discards another spade. Well, what's West down to? West has got two hearts. Uh, I think it looks like four diamonds. What if I play the, the ten of spades here and see where that gets me? Got seven tricks, the ace of diamonds is eight. Let's try the ten of spades. Nine, that's good. It's good to see. Yeah, I think I'm one sh trick short here, everyone. West has got winners now, but winning nine of diamonds. And East has got a winning heart. So we weren't terribly lucky there, everyone. The hearts weren't 3-3. Three, three. West didn't lead a spade. It seems like these robots always know which suit to lead at the time. They never let anything, they never let us get away with anything there. They knew that they tend to know which finesses are winning and which ones are losing. So let's have a look at what happened at the other tables on this hand. Three no trump, one off. We lose four imps. But did anyone make it? Well, nobody made it. How interesting. Really? Is that the result? One spade? <laughs> I like my partner's double. I think my partner did extremely well on the hand. I agree wholeheartedly with their choices. Okay, a pass, pass. Okay, I think I'm going to pass on this hand. I'm not going to do... No, oh, darn it. We've passed out the hand. That's a pity. Let's have a look at what happened at the other tables on this hand. Let's study it a little bit. So we passed it, and the other tables, oh, only one hand played it, everyone. So, so, so far, only one hand has played it, and they did that by opening the hand with one heart. I'm actually, if you look at uh, Anthea's hand here, she's got 11 points with a five-card suit. Again, I'm in agreement with her choice of pass. It doesn't fit the rule of 20 if you're an aficionado of that. And also, it's, you know, it's got eight losers on the hand and you're vulnerable in first seat. I like a decision. I think my partner's making a lot of good decisions so far in this set. Hopefully we can um, pick up a few good results on the last few boards. So let's, here we go. One diamond from East, pass from me.
a double from partner, one no trump. Okay, do I risk two clubs, everyone? I've only got five points. The opponents are vulnerable. So if the opponents go down in no trumps, that would be quite a good result for us. Okay, so we're in one no trump. And I think I'm going to lead my second highest club here. You've heard of second highest from four small. Well, that's a legitimate option. Hmm. Who would have rebid their spade suit on the west hand? I would have. Okay. So when you lead second highest, the next card you should be playing is your third highest card, everyone. Should I cover this? Well, if I do, I think it's odds on that East has the 10. They've opened one diamond after all. Let's have a look at the auction. One diamond promised three or more diamonds, but... Hmm. The reason you don't lead fourth from the top um, is because uh, you don't have an honour. And that's something I'm trying to instill into everyone's game is lead low like. So I think I'm going to play low here. Strange play from the Clara. Well, I can insert the nine here now and that will force the eight, won't it? I certainly don't think they're going to play the eight, or, do, or will they? So maybe they will, so let's play the seven. Partners. Hopefully partner will play low here. Well done, partner. You're a champion. Now, I think it's time to play a club. What do you think, everyone? Give them another club trick. Or do we play hearts? So what's partner showing up with three spades? I believe two diamonds because she echoed. I think she plays natural count. Um, perhaps three clubs and four hearts. And that means that De Clara has left uh, two cards in hearts, maybe two cards in diamonds and one club. So I think that's the layout left. So I think playing a club is the right card to play. Now I can play that. I can now cash my King of Diamonds. Partner's got two winners here, so she's not sure which one to throw away. <laughs> so she's thrown the Ten of Clubs, which means she must hold two winning hearts or a winning heart and a winning spade from here. So we'll let Partner take the last two tricks. Yes, Pam's asking question, how do you slow down uh, BBO? Yeah, that was a good result. I think we did quite well on the hand, not getting too involved. So we're down to that one imp, where minus one imp. Pam's asking question, how do you slow down BBO uh, so you can discuss hands without being throw out, thrown out? Well, it depends, Pam, whether you're renting robots or not. Um, the great problem with renting robots is, uh, not, uh, not renting robots or playing for free, is that if there's other people who are around, unless it's a set game, if you have a set game, I don't think that BBO can throw you off. But if you're playing for free against robots, um, 
uh, or against the um, machine, then they will they may throw you off. I, I haven't experienced that yet, but I a lot of people have had that experience. So let's have a look. So so far so good. Partner and I are going quite well here. Okay, fifteen points, a five card major, a five three three two. They throw you off with a set game as well, Pam. That's interesting. I don't quite know why they would do that. Uh, but they're not throwing us off here. We're taking as much time as we like and BBO is not doing anything. And it's pro probably because we're using robots, I'm guessing. The teams matches, you can sit there for a long time and look at things and um, they, they won't throw you off. It could be part of tournaments, I think. So I think I'm going to open one no trump on this. Does anyone agree with me? If I open one spade and my partner bids one no trump, then what's my option? Do I pass? I think one no trump looks like the right option here. Partner plays transfers. I never asked her if she played um, um, a five card stamen though. Yeah, so he ended up in Okay, so we're in no trumps. Again, the robots always leave the suit where you have uh, the least winners. And I can bet you, my, your bottom dollar, that the robot knows the ace of clubs is offside. But here we go, we're going to try the king anyhow. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Oh. Well, that's an interesting play. Do I try the queen? Why not? If I try the queen. Wow. So sometimes the robots are good, sometimes they're just terrible. So let's play a low spade. Cross to the jack. Hopefully spades break reasonably. Some more spade winners. And some more spade winners. And let's keep going with some spades. So shall we take our seventh trick? Minor transfer would be good, and that's probably what um, uh, uh, Anthony was thinking about. The one thing I said to her on the phone was, uh, do you play transfers to the majors? She said, yes. We never get to asking about transfers to the minors. So she was probably nervous about making a transfer, bidding two spades, if her, her methods were um, that could show either minor. And I'm guessing that's what Anthea plays. Um, she may have been nervous about doing that uh, because I could, may have thought it was a transfer to clubs. Yep. So I concur with all of those comments from people so far, but I think my partner, and, and that happens a lot in uh, what we like to call honeymoon partnerships where people have never played together before. And now I'm going to play the 10 of diamonds. Yeah, well. I think West is probably not going to be very happy about this. Has West been end played? Oh, where's the Queen of Diamonds? Oh, where East must have it. Oh. Yeah, Diamonds would have played quite nicely on that hand and it would have played better than 90 as it turns out. Um, uh, but still, you see the scores are quite close, everyone. There's only one... 1.9 imps in it, so it's uh, you know it's been a very very tight match here, and I, I think my partner should be very proud. Let's have a look what would have happened. Diamonds were 4-0, as you may have noticed, and uh, diamonds may not have gone so successfully. We would have lost two clubs, two diamonds, and a heart, so we would have gone down in three diamonds. 
uh, double, you know, seeing all four hands. Pass, pass, one heart. If anyone thinks this is a two club overcall, then uh, we need to have a, a, a discussion at some point in time. Uh, there's something that we I like to refer to as the the um, uh, the suit quality test, and that's relevant to two level overcalls or higher, especially um, when you're in an exposed position straight after the opening bid. If you overcall two clubs, then you have to pass the suit quality test that goes like this: the number of honours you have in that suit you're bidding plus the number of cards you have in that suit you're bidding should equal or exceed the number of tricks you're trying to take. Well, how many clubs do I have? Five. How many honors do I have? One. Well, that's six. If I bid two clubs, I'm trying to take eight tricks. So don't bid two clubs. It's as simple as that. And that's relevant to two level overcalls. Pass. Okay, I've got an interesting opening lead here, everyone. I don't think I want to be um, too passive on this hand, uh, meaning, and a passive lead would be the jack of spades through dummy's bid suit. I have a feeling a low club might be the right start. At least we might try and build up a club trick because after all, we do want to defeat this hand and leading a shortage when I've got a natural trump trick doesn't appear to be the right choice. So if that's the case, I'm gonna start with my fourth highest club. Well, that's not a bad holding to have in dummy. Ah, our partners, ah, so partner played the, ah, so they've got king, ace, king, doubleton in the um, declarer's hand here, everyone. Otherwise they wouldn't have played that way. Everyone, my correct card there should have been the jack. When you hold two touching honours and declare a leads towards dummy, then you should always play the higher of the touching honours rather than the lower one. Well, this could be some good defence from my partner here. Hmm. Definitely going to win the queen. And I definitely have another trick in the bag. I might play the queen of clubs to see, should I be cashing the ace of diamonds here? If I play the queen of clubs, then declare is going to trump it in dummy. And if partner can't over trump the nine, then declare gets to discard. Yeah, it's the rough and slough, exactly. So I don't want to run that risk. I think I'm going to cash the Ace of Diamonds. And now, now I might just play a third diamond. Do you know though, everyone, if I, if my, I, we've got this off because I've got a natural trump trick, but if we might be able to beat it two tricks, if my partner can trump with the jack of hearts or the clara fails to trump with the nine and my partner's eight uh, um, jack might be able to force out the ace king we might be able to get this three down so let's try another club and see where that leads us this partner trumpet i'm hoping she does she does but not quite high enough we needed to have partner hold the jack. Oh, partner held the king, so she did just as well. Well, declare the defense of the. They've done pretty poorly, our opponents. And I think now we're going to take this a couple of tricks down. And declare has got the rest. 
And I reckon this is going to give us a victory. Eight tricks taken. What's the final score? Do we have a win? <laughs> we won. <laughs> we won by one. Everyone? Oh, we've got more. There's a couple more boards. Okay. So let's try, um, let's try two more hands. And that'll take our tally or two. Um, that'll take our tally to 10. Pass, pass. Should we, should we quit now? We're winning. Pass, pass. Oh, very interesting hand. 9, 12, 20. Am I worth a two, uh, a two no trump? Two clubs? Mm, don't like two clubs. I'm giving you a lesson on two clubs this week. And this is, I might, if I treat this as a balanced hand, then it's only a two no trump bid. If I treat it as an unbalanced hand, then I've got too many losers. One, two, three, four. And the maximum I should have is three. So I'm going to treat this like a two no trump opening bid. Three clubs. My partner might play five cards, Stamen, but I'm again I didn't ask, so I'm going to bid three spades, um, uh, hoping that she only plays four cards, Stamen. There we go. I'm judging by my partner's thoughts that she's only got three. Oh no, she's got four. Well done. Partner, you've played a good game today. I'm very impressed. Well, this is this is a good result. Cheap trick to start with. Do we trump a low club in dummy before we touch trumps? Hmm. I think it's probably safe, isn't it? And if we do that, we might then be able to get a bunch of discards going. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll trump a low club. Uh, let's not be squiddy here. Let's try the eight of spades if we can afford it. Oh, oh goodness. I didn't see the ten of spades there. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. My silly fault for not watching. Ah, oh, goodness gracious. Talk about being punished. <laughs> oh dear. How silly was that? I am human. I absolutely am human. And how? <laughs> oh boy. Let's try and sneak a low heart through here. And anyway, we can claim the last two tricks. So two down, sorry about that partner, my fault. That was a, a poor effort. I would have made the hand had I simply done nothing but draw trumps. That's all I had to do. All I had to do was draw trumps. But with both, both miners breaking 6-1, um, I got severely punished, didn't I? And trumps 3-2, of course. Here we go, last board, everyone. One club. What have we got? 15 points. Should I overcall one no trump? Should I bid one heart? Any thoughts? It's a very close decision, I think. I think I prefer one heart when it's, when it's a little bit um, ratty like this.
Well, I'm definitely worth a three heart bid here because I think that the opponents I want to bid on, I'm not prepared for them to play two spades. And if they lead a spade, I'll be declarer. Um, maybe a partner might take this as some sort of game try. I'm not sure. Should I redouble? Any thoughts? Redouble, say the partner, the partner I've got a pretty good hand. Um, and I don't mind playing two hearts redoubled on the hands if that ends up being the final contract. Let's have a look at that double. It's a support double showing three cards and spades. <coughs> if my partner has four card support, she might bid here. Okay, I'm prepared then to pass now. Okay, they did three spades, let them have it. Ah, mission accomplished. That doubleton king of spades looks like bad news as a declarer here. Isn't redouble stronger than three hearts? It is, and that's why I bid it. Exactly, good question, Jack. It is stronger than three hearts. So now we're defending three spades. Partner, your lead. Okay. Well, let's play low in courage. Hmm. Interesting. Strange choice for the Clara. They threw a heart. They're probably going to try and set up a cross rough here, aren't they, partner? Um, everyone? So, declarer has got six spades, probably. One heart, two clubs, and four diamonds. Can we beat this hand? Well, I've got a diamond trick, a heart trick, and a spade trick. So, the answer to that is yes. Let's try it. Play ace of hearts. Oh, I don't have a heart trick anymore. I'm going to win this, everyone. I'm, I'm going to return a trump to stop the... Oh, no, I can't do that because those clubs are high now, aren't they? Hmm. What about if... Declarer only started with five spades. If they only started with five spades and they draw all of the trumps, then that means that they'll, um, if I force them to trump again, they won't be able to um, uh, enjoy the last two heart tricks. What do they do? But if they've got six trumps, then I don't think there's anything I can do. They'll take a total of five trump tricks, uh, a rough in dummy, and a bunch of clubs. So. I'm going to play them for having five spades here and continue with another heart. Ace, yeah. Ace of diamonds is not going to do me any good, I don't think, as far as shooting the contract goes, because I don't think I can beat the contract. But I think I can reduce Declarer's trumps. Yeah, well, that's a disaster because partner Claire had a mile of spades. They're now cold for game, as it turns out. And I think this is probably going to be quite a good score for us because four spades was making. He's got another trump left, 11 tricks. So we've actually done well on this hand because we've sort of talked them out of game and bidding game probably shouldn't have been such a stretch for East West on this hand. Okay, everyone, I think we'll have to finish there because that's 11 o'clock. So could you give a big round of applause for um, Anthea? Um, everyone, I'll open up the microphones 
and just say thank you to Anthea. And uh, we can um, discuss any of the hands.